Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 25 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. I do have some additional track testing uh, footage that I'd like to show you at this time, uh, which I wasn't able to include in the last video, so I'll get on with that right now. Like I said before, we probably don't need this portion of the track at all. Um, I think we are only going to need tracks uh, for the spans in between the uh, rotor magnet groups uh, just to move the um, magnet into position, the stutter. And, um, hmm. Let me just try one more thing. I'm going to uh, give this a little bit of a hand spin and we'll see what happens when the uh, when the static carriage comes off the end of the rail oh, I'm not off the end of the rail but off the end of the track, the test track. Uh, we'll let it come off and we'll see where it goes from there. It should uh, uh, go to an alignment with the uh, south pole of the stator uh, directly over the north facing that magnet group. Let's see if that's true. Give it that little bit of a spin. Yep. Now, oh, did you see that? Uh, it snapped right back when it gets to the next group, the south facing up group. And uh, it aligns with that. Now, that, of course, the self-shifting of the carriage is due to attraction. Um, over here, we came off the track and it actually shifted out just a little bit when it came to the group, um, that's so it would be a maximum attraction. Now as it passed that group, it comes to the um, to the next group, which is south facing up, and, and you can see the, the carriage slides back into position for attraction here with the north pole of the stator facing the um, south facing magnet group. Now at this point we would need to bring the um, static carriage back out so that the south will be lined up with the next group. See, So we do need some kind of a... Um, what we need is a force. If we had a repulsive uh, magnetic force at the back end of a group to shift the magnet immediately and, um, and then if we can hold that position with a short piece of track just until we get to the uh, next magnet group, that would be ideal. So um, one of our participants did suggest using a segmented track, and I think uh, that's going to be the answer. A segmented track so that we only have a short piece of track uh, in an area like this. Maybe from here to here. So we'd have the repulsive kick at the end of the magnet group which would shift the static carriage. And then a short track leading into the next magnet group. So that'll be something to think about. Now I thought that I would try one more track experiment before we run out of time on this video. And uh, what I've done, uh, back in here where I'm pointing you can see a, a carriage bolt. And this is part of the uh, adjustment mechanism that uh, will raise or lower the uh, aluminum bar so that the uh, slider rail is adjusted up or down. 
and uh, I have adjusted the slider rail now so it's a one inch uh, clearance between the stator magnet and the rotor magnets. Uh, previously we were set at uh, one and a half inches and um, to do this I also had to adjust the uh, wheels of the static carriage. I uh, had to raise them up so that they wouldn't scrape against the uh, masonite surface. Okay, and um, another thing I did, I altered the end of the track a little bit to lessen the amount of deflection. It still comes out as you can see, but uh, it's less than it was before. And uh, what I'm going to try is to see if I can get, um, uh, we should get a better um, rotational force with the stator magnet lowered now. Uh, I could go even lower than this. I, uh, in past experiments have shown that I can go down to as little as three quarters of an inch clearance between the stator and rotor magnets. However, uh, I can't do this with the current setup because, as you can see, the um, underside of the polycarbonate material of the static carriage uh, is very close to the top of the track. And if I go any lower than this, then the, the screws that jut out above the top of the track will slam into the side of the carriage. See? So I can't do that. I could add uh, another piece of polycarbonate, quarter inch polycarbonate material underneath the static carriage, uh, between the carriage and the um, stator magnet. And, and that of course would lower the magnet another quarter inch, giving me a three quarter inch clearance. So I may do that later, but uh, for now uh, I'll, I'd like to just try this experiment uh, set at a one inch gap. Uh, so let's get on with that. I'm going to bring that the wheel around so that um, we're at the starting repulsive point and I'll let it go. Okay. Now, you see what happened. It stopped out here and I, I did achieve 180 degrees of rotation this time so that's kind of nice uh, and the magnet was self-adjusting uh, when I came into this north facing up group uh, there was just enough deflection here at the back end of the rail just enough to leave me in a position where I could get that self-adjustment, say, of the stator. See how that moved out? And, and that carried all the way through to the end of the group. Now when I get to the end of the group, the uh, south pole of the stator magnet is directly over the um, north magnet, the, la the last north facing magnet of the north group. And of course what happens there is that you have a very strong attraction. As soon as I pass that last magnet, uh, there's no effort up until I get to the last magnet. And then right at that point I have a very strong attraction wanting to stop the rotation and pull the wheel backwards, you know, giving it a reverse rotation. See how that works? If I move that out, it'll give a reverse. So, um, so I definitely can't go past 180 degrees by this uh, manner. However, if um, if I did give the wheel uh, a little extra spin by hand like I did in the previous setup, this is what would happen. It does go by, comes to the next group, but here at this point um, I'm very, moving very slowly and I can't enter the group because the uh, this is a south up group 
and the south pole of the magnet is still lined up, 